So we're starting the second half of this lecture and we answered the question about what is innovation. And we talked about how innovation is the uh, new ideas or combination of existing ideas in new ways, but making that into reality. And we also talked about how the innovation process is not just coming up with a new idea, but uh, combining the humanistic aspects as well as the scientific aspects, technological aspects, uh, to create a solution that people uh, appreciate and use and so forth. So the combination of uh, science and humanities is extremely important. We saw that with the Pfizer uh, device with the inhaled insulin, which was a failure. We saw that with uh, the MP3 player with the iPod combining with iTunes and the design elements, that was a success. So this combination of science and art is extremely important. That was also the article that I sent to you in preparation for today's lecture about the unity of science and art. So this course is also going to be innovative in that we will actually be doing a unified course about science and art together as part of this innovation process. So number one, by doing this, we'll be uh, learning new things and learning about science and art and all that and how that can be combined and how they're related in a unified way. But we will also be doing, for the first time uh, in, the, in the world, or, or very few cases, I should say, of this type of curriculum or educational innovation. So the book that we're going to be using and discussing and learning from, uh, in addition to the notes that we'll be talking about in the first slice or first half of the course, will be this book called Waves, which I sent to you by email. And this is a novel, a uh, social check that I wrote uh, and is available on Amazon. So I sent you the link to download the ebook and obtain this book and to begin reading it before the next session. So we will actually be uh, studying it starting with the third lecture, but uh, it will be helpful to start reading it uh, beforehand. And so this is a social check uh, and a uh, Uber Faust. And Faust, as you may know, and as I mentioned, is the name of Goethe, Wolfgang uh, Go Goethe's work, a very famous German uh, scientist, uh, humanist, who created a very important work of literature called Faust. And this is a 21st century version of the Faust legend. So it's set in uh, more modern times and uh, it combines science and art and music. And we're gonna talk about that throughout the uh, semester. So in terms of some resources for the book, uh, we have uh, the book on Amazon and it says it's for the Kindle. You don't need a Kindle device. You can download the Kindle app for iOS, uh, Apple phones or Android, uh, Samsung phones or LG or whatever. So that website is here. And uh, let me pull that up. And you can find it here, Waves Uber Faust by Ogan Gorel. And you can find uh, all sorts of uh, reviews here that talk about uh, the book. So uh, one of them in particular uh, is interesting. by Eric, uh, a textbook thriller, unlike anything you read in school, but maybe we should. Uh, the book style could be a glimpse into the future way we teach and keep our students entertained and connected to science education. So there's an educational aspect to it. Uh, it's not only education, it's, it's a work of literature, 
but we're integrating this book into science and art education. I'll talk a little bit more about that. You can find uh, more uh, uh, reviews and content about the book on Goodreads, and I'll share these links in the Google Calendar. There's also a Facebook group uh, that you're welcome to join, and that has uh, many content around uh, music, around uh, some of the science, around philosophy, around medicine. So for example, around music, you have posts about uh, the different music in the book, and there's a lot of resources here by different chapters, etc. So I'll give you one example. Uh, there's some posts on uh, TikTok. And uh, and this is a short excerpt that I'm going to play for you from TikTok from chapter eight. The night, a very strange night it had been, passed fitfully. The buffeting tempest had kept me up blinking, nailing me on sleeping to bed. And as I watched Ava snoozing beside me, uh, I hear? asked myself how it all had gone so bad. There, with veils of darkness bright, in the Alembic's deepest member glowing like a living ember, yes, like the finest garnet spark, shoots its flashes through the dark. So that's actually uh, some Beethoven, and that's an excerpt from the uh, chapter eight, and then also an excerpt from Goethe's Faust. The night, a very strange. So here's another one. I hum the tristesse, Chopin's lyrical etude, lilting in synchrony with the train as it meandered past quiet pastures, clinging alongside glistening lakes, glittering the lush secreted valleys. Up towards the Alps, we resolutely advanced. At times, the soft clacking on rails, pacing this wistful journey, would slow, pausing to contemplate it might seem God's verdant creation. The music sounded hymnal homage to deeds past, and of a certain hoping too, a melding of traditions melting, possibilities crystallizing. I imagine Gounod's nervous waltz from Faust and Marguerite, couples dancing in magical alpine castles, gaily unaware of a world of elegance and false forethought to be blasted forever by the great war. What lay ahead? Soaring with the music then, rising to meet the French range, I dreamt that amongst this glorious geology, I might find beauty, nature, history redolent and future resplendent. So that's from I chapter the 23. And here's another example from Nina Chafe too, chapter two. In my American style optimism. False hopes engendered by blithe smiles she knew were disingenuous. She once told me that though Marxism was a fairy tale, she should know, it allowed her to see with abject clarity the fantasies here too. Some people are more equal than others made Orwellian farce of Soviet communism. Likewise, some people have fewer opportunities than others. Summarize the unstated, unsuppressed truth of America. Brought up reading an eclectic mix of officious Pravda dispatches and banned foreign literature, this was how she saw it. Then, as I recalled one particular stymie adventure, there was Illinois. An acquaintance of mine, Jack, highly placed in state politics, reminded me that in line with the other Tartuffes, the forum was greased not with fanciful dreams, but with generous gifts for the double-breasted, sometimes sweat-suited governor. So that's some links, and as I mentioned, uh, you can get the book on Amazon. So I'll give a little bit of overview of the uh, structure of the book. There are actually three books. One is the Melodio, which is a third person thriller going into the future. The chapters get longer, which is why you see these uh, letters get bigger. The second part is the Harmonio, which is a first person kind of backstory and the chapters get shorter. That's why the letters get smaller here. And the third part of the book, and these three books are interleaved, is called the Ritmo, 
And it's neither third person nor first person. It is a dialogue. And they represent one hour scientific dialogue sessions, uh, real science, but in a fictional setting. And they stay the same time. And so each triplet, which we will go through each lecture, starting with the third lecture, will have one chapter from the melodio, one chapter from the harmonio, and one chapter from the ritmo. And there are 12 triplets that we will go through. Uh, one way to think about it is that the front story is the melody. It's a political thriller. It's a medical novel. It's a science fiction. And as I mentioned, the chapters get bigger. And the backstory is the harmony. It's a psychological thriller. It's what we call in literature, Bildungsroman, sort of how the character was developed. It goes backward in time. The melodio goes forward in time. And the ritmo or rhythm stays in one day, in hour long blocks. It's a scientific Galilean dialogue, creative nonfiction is what we call it. So it's three different genres, three different books. Now this diagram is a GIF and it shows how time evolves in this novel. It starts in chapter one in the Melodio. It goes forward in time in the Melodio, goes backward in time in the Harmonio and stays in one day in the Ritmo. So if we start here and the Harmonio basically describes the situation leading up to the start. And if you notice here, time gets compressed and space gets, com uh, time gets compressed and time speeds up in the Melodio and time stretches out in the Harmonio and time stays the same in the Ritmo. So those are the three books just to orient you uh, about that. And I'll explain later the reasons for this uh, structure. So during the course of this reading of this book, we will cover many topics in physics, many of which you may be familiar with, some which you are not. We'll be talking about physics mechanics. We'll be discussing electromagnetism and waves, quantum physics, cosmology, and then we move, uh, well not move, but these are all going to be interlinked. Uh, uh, with chemistry, we'll cover chemical reactions, thermodynamics and kinetics, intermolecular interactions, spectroscopy, the chemistry of water. We'll discuss organic chemistry, biochemistry, focusing on proteins, cell biology, molecular biology, pharmacology, anatomy and physiology, neurobiology, evolution, and some general concepts about science. So in this novel, in this literature, we will actually cover many of these topics. So we will be mixing literally science and art together. We'll be analyzing the book from a literary perspective as a work of literature. And then we'll be also studying the science related to the book and reviewing the science related to the book. So let's talk a little bit about the course. 